Alrighty, I'm Beck Lane and this is Catalyst and Company. Catalyst and Company where we're catalysts in each other's lives as well as our own. And we work at being the artist we've always wanted to be or we be the artist we've always wanted to be. Um, behind me is a painting I've been working on. I don't know the woman's name. The reference material I found on a, uh, on a Flickr, no, on, sorry, on a Tumblr page. And oh, I meant to put a link to it the other day. And I'll try and remember to, to add a link to this one particular page that I found on Tumblr. And it's all African Americans or Black Americans. And this woman, this is probably taken about the turn of the last century. So right around 1900, she's right in my wheelhouse where it's an antique photograph of, um, it's an antique photograph and this woman is dressed so primly and so beautifully, but yet her hair is a little bit of a mess, which I really, I really appreciate. But uh, anyway, it's right in my wheelhouse. It's everything that, that I love and look for. Uh, photographs of, I especially look for photographs of African Americans. I don't know why I got sucked into this, this whole uh, thing, you know, this whole uh, genre or ooh, ooh, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, uh, uh, this whole thing of, of painting African Americans and, and uh, black and brown people several years ago, and I don't want to stop. I've heard from, I've gotten suggestions from many different people, some very strong suggestions, that I stop painting African Americans and black and brown people, that I uh, choose other races to depict. Uh, and several emphatic people have said, you should, you should paint white people. I'm not interested in black and brown people. And uh, you know, you should, you should paint other races, but white people would be good. And um, I like your white people better. I, it doesn't interest me at all. So I'm always looking for reference material and especially more casual, well, any reference material for uh, African Americans, especially during this time period, the 1800s uh, through the 1940s, 1950s, because a lot of people in these communities didn't have cameras. The cameras weren't available to them yet or they couldn't afford them. Um, but so I appreciate being able to find reference material like this. So this is what this is who I'm working on, and I may give her a name. I may just stick with unidentified woman because she is not identified on the site. Anyway, I made a decision today. I was able to go to uh, Dick Blick in Tampa. I have not left Sarasota in over four years in over f four very long, tedious, life-sucking years. And so you've watched me get older and older and, and more and more drained and try, you've watched me try desperately just to keep breathing, just to find a reason to keep breathing. And today uh, I took a planned trip with, um, some friends, two friends to Tampa and it was, it was so nice. It was just so nice to be in a real city and see all kinds of people and buildings and vibrancy and feel, feel true genuine life. People walking in the streets and hear music playing from cars and just city life again. It was so, it was rejuvenating. Uh, my friend took a photograph of me while we were waiting to get lunch, and she, you know, she sent it to me. She took several photographs, thank God, because she sent this one picture to me, and I just look drained and exhausted, and I look like the life has just been taken out of me. And I looked at it and went, "Yep, that's ex that's how I felt. That's how exactly how I felt, especially over the last four years." And as time has gone on, with me not being able to go anywhere, and probably you the same. But anyway, I got to Tampa today. I got to eat some really beautiful Asian food. Um, oh my God, it was so good. It was so, so good. And I can't remember the name of the restaurant now. Anyway, it was like, oh, 
oh my God, something besides turkey burger and lettuce or pantry food, you know, pantry, uh, food out of the food pantry. Um, it was just so, it was so awesome. It was so awesome living a day like I'm actually alive. And in that day, we picked up two canvases at Dick Blick, which are going, going to be used for a commission. But I was also able to go back to Michael's and get a couple more. So now in my little poop, uh, painting studio, uh, feeling somewhat rejuvenated, still looking exhausted and drained, but uh, feeling somewhat rejuvenated and vaguely aware that I am a part of some world, I, uh, seeing it and feeling, oh, God, it was, it was really nice. Um, I have now have two, four, six canvases. But I also made the decision to pull out Michelle. I was gonna put Michelle to the side and let her dry and look at her in a couple of days and see what I could do with her. Cause I know I could fix her. However, I don't want to, I don't care. I don't care enough to fix her. Uh, the head really is too out of proportion with the rest of her body. Uh, even when I looked at her in my drying, drying room, usually I turn the canvases around so I can't see them. Um, and then I could turn them back around and I see them with fresh eyes. It really helps. You should try it. I just, I kept looking at her and her chest was too, is too brown. It's explicitly brown. And as I said many times, I don't like using a lot of brown when I'm painting black and brown people because it feels inappropriate for me to choose which color brown is the correct color brown. It is not my business to be deciding which skin color is the correct skin color for people who don't look like me. And that's why I use teals and blues. So I made the decision to do this. I am gonna wipe her down as best I can. Most of the oil paint is mixed with um, mixed with mineral spirits. So a lot of it will come off, not all of it. But hopefully I can get her down, get the image down enough where I can do another painting over the top. I will not re-gesso it. I'm just gonna leave the oils. I'm gonna leave whatever residue. Whatever is left behind is left behind. I will coat it with oils and I'll do uh, primarily an oil. It'll be an oil painting over the top of this. But I wanted to show you this because another thing I've mentioned many, many, many times is that I was always taught if you can't get, get things right the first time, you're a failure. And I've always felt too that I know I can correct things. I know I can correct it. Um, and I've, I've thought you know, you don't throw in the towel on things. I'm not really throwing in the towel on Michelle. I'm just throwing in the towel on this version of the towel, uh, Michelle. And I'll just redo her. I'll just redo her on another surface. It's okay to say, this thing isn't working for me. It's okay to say, I don't want to waste more paint on something that isn't right. It's something I will be proud of. Let's say I hop on my scooter tomorrow and get squished, which has almost happened about a dozen times. Almost happens about a dozen times a week here in Sarasota. But if I get squished tomorrow, do I really want this? to be part of my portfolio that I leave behind. I don't know if the portfolio is gonna go anywhere or not. 
It may end up in a dumpster. But do I really want this version of Michelle left behind? I know I don't. I want the best I can possibly do, the best I can leave in the world, the best presentation I can possibly develop to be my legacy. her down and I'm not sad nothing about it this isn't a precious baby it's a painting and I can do a million of these a month given the supplies when I have the money and the supplies I can do this all day long I paint, paint my friggin sleep so it's not a precious baby It's a painting that I will do again, and I will do better, and I will be right. I will do something that I can be proud of, even if I get squished. So hopefully in removing this, I won't lose too much texture, because one of the things I love about these rough canvases from uh, Michaels or, or from uh, Dick Blick, I bought what I bought today, I love the texture. It's just so it's so rough. I can hear the the paint being applied by the brush on the canvas. That's music to me. So hopefully I won't fill it in too much. I won't be pressing the paint into the canvas too much because I don't want smooth, glassy surface to work on. I just want to get these globs of paint off or as best I can. And I'll just uh, coat over it with, with a, in, an oil color. And I wanted to do this tonight because in the dress that she's wearing, I had used a lot of Neil McGill. And there's a point where it won't come off. And that's fine, I just didn't want too much of it. This is somewhat dried, that Neil McGill. Now, her, there is a lower half to this canvas. There's a second, or to this portrait, there is a second canvas, and it's her hands. And this is something that's a little odd for me, too. I've decided to hang on to it. It's just her hands with the dress as a backdrop. And there's something about it that I, I hate to say this about my own work, but something that I appreciate and I find compelling. So I'm just gonna sit with it, sit with the hands, Michelle's hands. Get this as cleaned off as I can with oil, uh, get the oils off of here as best I can. And uh, then hit it up with a coat of some type of oil paint and we'll see what happens. You know, it's okay to say this isn't working for me and I'm tired of it, and I know I can do better, and that's, that's the big thing. I know I can do better. And I had started this portrait because of Sharon Spring's portrait of Michelle Obama. That amateurish, half-hearted attempt at painting Michelle Obama. I find it so insulting. But I don't want to do the same thing. I don't want to follow in the footsteps footsteps of Sharon Spring either. I don't want to say, well, it's the best I can do today, and just that's it. That's the end of the story. No, I can paint Michelle Obama. I can paint her, and I will. And I can do a significant version of 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 her, a significant portrait. So, since I can, I will. 
and it will not take me nine months like it took Sharon Sprague. She actually was notified six years ago, six years prior, so I guess that would be seven years ago, that she was on the list to paint Michelle Obama. And then she was lit, she was um, uh, notified nine months ago that she was the official choice. This was invitation only to paint uh, the first lady. And she got a phone call that nine months ago that she was the one that was chosen. And as I've discussed, it's a daisy chain of, of political people that she's painted, um, political celebrities, status people that she's painted. And so she has all those connection, connections. So she, she was chosen, she was anointed. But the version that came out, I'm, I'm so angry. I can't even be nice about it. I'm so angry over, over her finished product. It, it's so basic. We can do better, so we're going to. We can do better than Sharon Sprung's uh, portrait, and we can do better than this. We can certainly do better than this. What I'd really like to see, and we can, and it won't take six or seven years or nine months either to get something that's that we can be proud of. So what I'd really like to see is other people attempting this as well. We may not be in a daisy chain of connections. We may, may not be the anointed ones, but we can fucking do this. So let's do this. I would like to inspire other people to try. Not just to try though, if you're not happy with your first attempt, you're not a failure. Try again, do it again. All right, what I've got, I've got jars of mineral spirits uh, over my painting area, over my table, and I recycle all of my mineral spirits. They go from one jar to the next. Well, the sediment, when the sediment uh, re is released from the mineral, mineral spirits and collects on the bottom, then I paint, paint pour that, the clear uh, mineral spirits into another jar. And then I wait for the sediment to settle and then pour it into another jar. And so I just keep using the mineral spirits. And if you don't know, a lot of this isn't coming off, unfortunately, right now anyway. If you don't know, um, you can take that, that sediment, that mush that's at the bottom of the jar, and you can, what is going on? I ate a lot today, you can tell. Um, you can take that mud, that mush, and you can actually mix it up and make it into its own color, adding um, an oil, I don't know. Check online, that's what YouTube is for. You can actually grind it down and take that muddy mush and make it into something usable. Okay, I'm going to continue on removing her. I've gotten quite a, I've gotten a bit of it off. This she did have a lot of layers though, because I did work at her quite a while. But we'll see how much we can I can get off, and we'll see what I use it for. This is a 36 by 36 inch canvas. God knows I've got enough images to work from. God knows I love to paint, so I'll find something to put on here. But I don't want it to go to waste. I don't want to just throw it in the garbage because I'm not happy. I want to see if I can use this again for something else. And we'll do Michelle again. All right, I'm Beck Lane. This is Catalyst and Company. If you'd like to help support Catalyst and Company, help me get more canvases, more paint. And thank you very much, Catherine, for today. Got to eat lots of Asian food and we got Starbucks and croissants and 
painting supplies, some painting supplies, which is fabulous. But if you'd like to help uh, support uh, Catalyst and Company, all the links are down below, including PayPal, K uh, PayPal Cash App. Um, I also have a Zelle account, apparently, or whatever it is. Um, and, oh, T Public Patreon, where you can supply monthly support, and I'm very rude and don't talk to people very much on it. But uh, Patreon. Um, but also, if you're interested in purchasing artwork, if you've seen images here or on my website, which is also linked down below, uh, that you like, let me know. Um, and I'll put you in contact with Andrew and Mark at Chasing Galleries here in Sarasota, or Jay Louise at Blue Egg in Fort Lauderdale, or Raphael Coelho up north in Newark, New Jersey. Okay, ready? Here we go. Ready, Carrie? Here we go. Mirror, mirror, mirror. Boink, boink.